वेलकम वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल आर यू थिंकिंग ऑफ अपग्रेडिंग योर स्प्रिंग बूट वर्जन फ्रॉम टू टू थ्री बट यू आर फीलिंग ओवर वेलमेड बाई ऑल द चेंजेस डज द थाट ऑफ डीलिंग विद जावा सेवेंटीन कंपेटिबिलिटी जकार्ता डबल ई माइग्रेशन हाइबरनेट सिक्स एक्स माई मेक्स यू फुल योर हेड आउट और मे बी यू आर जस्ट वरीड अबाउट ब्रेकिंग योर एप्लीकेशन इन द प्रोसेस so you are not the only one there is a good news so in this video in this detailed guide i will provide you step by step migrating the spring boot from 2x to your latest version that is spring boot 3x the video will highlight the key features and the key differences and the best practices so that you know there is a smooth transition happening and there is also a minimum possibility issues and the potential issues and also my it increases your maximum compatibility with your new feature so stay tuned and watch the video till the end so what this video will include is that java version upgrades to 17 and greater so whatever the versions prior to this are not compatible so uh, if you have been working with java and spring boot version 2 right so you have been you have to migrate it to the java version which is 17 plus we'll discuss in the further uh, spring boot compatible 3 that is compatibility so we'll all you know discuss what all things have been required uh, if you are using database uh, you know communicating with java to the database either using hibernate or any database configuration what all changes are required we'll discuss that as well how to do the error handling and the exception handling mechanism we also will discuss that and there are some security changes which are needs to be migrated so uh, that's all like we will be discussing and like we will be discussing many more things or apart from that so let's get started so if you are migrating from the version 2 to uh, 3x right so there are you know lot of application which has been you know developed in 2.x right so now we have to migrate it to the 3x now there is an uh, uh, request from the organization where you know all the vulnerabilities which are there in 2x right uh, which has to be migrated to the 3x so that all the vulnerabilities are solved there so you have to be careful and also be uh, diligent to make that particular sig significant changes so that you know there is also a uh, lot of difference between the version so that you can upgrade from uh, java some versions to the whatever version it is like you know 8 9 or 11 whatever it is you ultimately have to ship to java 17 okay because since spring boot 3 is ultimately the minimum version it supports is 17 or later so all the dependencies update api changes and the configuration modding has to be done accordingly now uh, we will be focusing on you know migrating each uh one by one with all this particular what we have discussed from 2 to 3 now as we already discussed uh so if you have been if you have been on any other versions like you know 8 9 10 11 or any of them right which is not uh, uh 17 right or be, uh, below so we have to definitely make your application change download that particular java 17 version and then uh have that environment variable reconfigured and then make your application uh changes so that you know your uh, your application which is still running in java 8 has to be upgraded to 17 or higher version so there are lot many new features has been introduced so it has not it will not break your application so we'll step by step check out like what has to be considered the very first thing i have already told you make the jdk version upgrade so that it, it is upgrading to the one so uh, we had, there are some you know versions which has been you know depreciated like you know some of the api some of the features which are available in java 8 right then you need to refactor the scores right so there are some deprecated methods classes etc you have to remove those right so when you are upgrading that you will get to know uh java 17 which has got you know modules related things which is where the, the project jigsaw right so if your application is not very much modularized right like 8 if you have been on an 8 then there is a high possibility that you have not migrated to your modularized so you it doesn't need to you worry about it because you are using the modules and you should ensure that compatibility but right that should be done now there are some jvm settings like you know uh, we have to check for the jvm option we have to check for the garbage collection settings 
uh, or there's a new version has been uh, you know 17 and meter right so there may be some default versions which are default things actually we have been set up uh, now we are discussing about uh, spring boot 3 compatibility so we'll look into one by one uh, the very first thing is that if you uh, check like you know spring boot the the core thing is spring right so the framework has been upgraded to 6.x okay so uh, spring boot 3 is is going to be built on top of spring framework 3 so not only whatever the core things which have been using like you know the beans and other life cycles and everything it has to be upgraded to that particular framework of 6 okay so make sure you does that because uh, java 17 is going to is required for that and it also su it, it supports the older version like you know 8 to 16 but has been you know dropped off so it is required that you know you upgrade your uh, versions to 17 and plus because the support is no more there now there is a jakarta double e package that is 9 right so spring boot is now using jakarta e which was formerly known as java double e now this is one of the major namespace changes that has been done so all the java packages which are there as java uh, x and start to jakarta right so all the location where you are been using this particular is going to affect that so this will affect the annotation the packages in the your dependencies your code everywhere you find it you have to just migrate to that particular thing secondly we have to import that particular packages so i have already informed like you know from java 8 uh, java x to jakarta so in all the latest six spring boot three packages like uh, if you have java x packages uh, persistent we have java servlet we have validation that has been definitely been renamed to jakarta.person, jakarta.servlet and later on like that. So, I have just given you the example. So, you need to update those imp uh, imports through your application. So, if you are using hibernate or servlet, so you have to just make sure wherever it is required, you upgrade that. Now, dependency. Now, Spring Boot has got the dependencies. Now, you, you need to make ensure that, that there is a starter dependencies are also upgraded with that is compatible with the spring boot for example you have this web dependency so you have to check that you know uh, the version is compatible with the spring boot version 3 uh, let's say you have data jpa which you have to check like you know it is ensuring that if you are using hibernate that is also compatible with the version which is uh, jakarta double e9 right which is uh, compatible with spring boot 3 as well so any third party libraries which you are using and any framework which is uh, you know has to be uh, which you are using it has to be you know um, uh, compatible with the latest version and also you have to check like you know if it is compatible with spring boot 3 and the java 17 plus right so you have to check and choose that particular version uh, spring data jpa you know, we already discussed like you know we have to align with the jakarta persistent api right so jakarta persistent package we have to check uh, like you have to check for the annotations which is compatible like at the red entity at the red id at the red table or any annotations which you are using so you must be able to check that okay you have to check for the equivalent components in that right so hibernate 6 plus also is used with compatible with uh, uh, spring boot 3 so let's say your version is uh, you have upgraded the spring boot version now you have to upgrade the hibernate version as well right because it is it is the like how java has been uh, modified from 8 to say 17 and it is compatible with 17 similarly all the hibernate uh, related jar and api has to be updated and also make those particular changes so make sure you does that now with respect to hibernate and the database configuration now if you see we are going to upgrade the hibernate uh, 6.0 so this is the latest version which is going to be updated as a and new features has been added and the changes right so java persistent api is going to support this the persistent instead of java x persistence so you are using jpql you are using the J criteria api so make sure you make those particular changes which are relevant to that okay any queries which you handle in the jpql or any criteria you have written right so you make sure your complex things are checked out you try to run your application and see whether it is running after your it, uh, migration has been done now database if you see uh, in order to run the particular database scripts on uh, on a fly right so uh, we with, uh, commit the, through the changes and automatically when you're trying to deploy with the uh, those scripts automatically we make use of the flyway or the liquid base right so you have to ensure your database you know migration tool also is upgraded with that and it is also compatible with the spring boot version 3 and uh, 17 java 17 version so both this of this particular liquify liquid base and the flyway has to be updated as an and also be compatible with these two versions right 
JDBC, you know, if you are using any other apart from, you know, connecting from the database, like, you know, we, you, we need to ensure that, you know, it is compatible. So your JDBC URL, your username, password, and anything related to the connection pooling configuration, you need to update those as well. So check the documentation uh, as per the JDBC and also check for the JDBC driver. Now, many times it happens that, you know, the latest JDK versions are supported with the latest JAR drivers, right? So you need to update that as well. You need to pull out those particular jar and then you know you need to, you need to add it in the class path. Transaction management now because uh, uh, this is one of the important aspect of when you are shifting, migrating from your uh, 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 the versions, right? So it, it is always uh, very significant or very important that you know your transaction capabilities, whatever it was uh, earlier working in similar way, it should also work in, uh, in the same way, right? So. And many times it happens that there are some changes in the transaction related transaction management, right? So you have to check for the support, like, you know, the declarative transaction, what is supported it, right? So you have to check uh, all the related things to the annotation, the configuration, it is supporting the latest version of the Spring, Spring Boot and Hibernate. Now, in terms of error handling and exception management, the, there are some global, uh, I mean, it is going to support, but obviously there are some global exception handling where we used to take care of that, the red controller advice, we have some custom controller return, but there are some error code and exception which might, which might have changed uh, with, with, with the alignment of that particular Jakarta double. So you need to ensure that those also things has to be considered and also that has to be changed. So now we have to, when you're talking about any exception handling annotations, like exception handler is there, response status is there, at the rate advice is there, controller advice. So they are all working properly after you have upgraded, right? So because there are some new defaults or behavior that has been changed up, right? So you need to check for the error handling. Okay, the custom error pages, what we have uh, created, the error response pages that you are going to return along with that particular HTTP, right? Status codes and the messages, you need to ensure that everything is working properly. Now, after this, like we are going to discuss about the security related changes because this is one of the important topic because the major changes with respect to 2x to 3x is of security. So uh, make sure you are listening to it properly. Uh, so Spring security, uh, there is, has been introduced many, you know, changes related to the OAuth yeah, authentication because the Spring security version itself has got changed along with the Spring Boot version, right? Uh, which is 6.x. So you have to align the Spring Boot three changes or uh, the Spring Boot two changes to the Spring Boot three along with the Spring security related 6x versions or greater. Okay. So that you have to make it compatible. So make sure you are everything like right from Java till Spring Boot, Spring and then the Spring security and then your Hibernate which we already discussed earlier should be supporting your all these particular versions. Now, uh, we already discussed AOR2 and the JOD updates, we have to uh, update uh, so accordingly with the latest version because uh, this library must have also undergone some changes, right? Some configuration they have changed, some uh, properties they must have changed, the way the auth login has been done, there there must be some changes. There are some JWT resource services that which the resources they must have moved from one location to another location, right? So there are some annotation which we need to look. The, what is a different style of configuration they might have introduced, right? Uh, earlier there was some you know support for you know YML uh, or properties, right? Now they must have moved to YML also. Many changes can be done. Now password encoder. This is one of the important feature when it comes to the choosing that encoder, right? When you're storing password. So now you have to handle that particular bcrypt encoder as well, by because it is uh, the by default one, but you need to check like you know the previous uh, version if it is was you know default has no option password encoder you need to ensure that you know you have that particular encrypted enabled that thing uh, the filter related changes uh, this require like you know you have to modify that particular spring security 6x require uh, related uh, filter change uh, so you need to make that particular configuration changes because earlier it was uh, we used to use the web security configure adapter uh, approach but now it has been changed to the security filter chain. Now all the approaches has been changed. You need to make that particular changes in that particular configure method. Earlier we, uh, I mean, we do need to replace that particular configure method where you used to do that particular changes, right? Now it has been replaced with the filter chain with the security filter method chain, right? So here you have to write that particular authorized request and matches request and any other 
authentication or whatever we need to do right so just check that changes and make that changes check for the documentation now uh, there are some csrsf changes and the cors uh, changes because these are all related to the uh, you know cross site and also uh, cross origin related things which there are some you know settings which might have changed so you need to make it streamline with this particular change so ensure your all configurations are you know properly been integrated with the front end so that you, you don't face your uh, problems when you're trying to make your application up now there are some default login and the logout pages which we have must have configured in the spring boot 2 version right so you make sure your default login and logout pages may, may, uh, you know must have affected the changes right so there are some auto configuration changes which automatically it is been to detect and you know make the configuration so it has to be aligned with the spring uh, security 6x version as well so you need to manually make some changes with respect to the login logout url so if, if, if it is you know uh, overridden basically when you're, you're in case of you know we have upgraded now there might be some deprecated methods like right? you know there are some methods like you know form login http basic which are still available but there are some slight behavior changes in those particular latest version so you need to ensure that even after those particular uh, package uh, changes with respect to the spring security there is no impact in that particular because you will get to know that there will be some compatible uh, compilable issue then you then or the, the compatible uh, many time it happens that you know it is compilable when you're trying to run it you, you get the issues right you need to check for this if you have some custom behavior also been added over here okay i hope this video was helpful to you and also it, it showcased like you know when what all things we need to consider when you are trying to migrate from 2x to 3x so this was one of the important uh, uh, video because many of them had requested this and many are uh, facing uh, problems to migrate and also many are very much fearful because that might break their application and also it takes a lot of time and also consumes uh, their effort so please share it with the needy people and also don't forget to like subscribe and hit the bell icon i will continue to make the videos which uh, you like and also please don't forget to uh, add a comment like what kind of videos you want me to make up thank you for watching